Hello guys, Dev Channel here, with another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the singleton design pattern to avoid unnecessary instances of objects. So for this purpose, we're going to create a new project and we're using a console application and I call the application singleton demo. We're using the .NET framework 4.5 for our test, but this is not depending on, on a framework. So uh, I want to show it on the example of, let's say we are adding to our project a new element and we're calling it comparer.cs, which is a class. Now let's make it public. And we are adding a public constructor, of course. And in our Compare, we're calling uh, public static, no, let's say public bool. Yeah? I want to make a comparison is string equals. We're getting string one and string two for our comparison. And we're returning, we're returning string one equals string two. So of course we do not need an implementation for a string equals, but I want to show only the usage of a single one. Uh, if we want to use our comparer, the common way is to make a new instance in every part of our code, like like uh, like this. Uh, we're calling, uh, for example, comparer is string equals and we're saying one and we are saying two and for our test reason we're writing this in the console dot right line is string equals and we're making a string concatenation and we uh, want to prevent the application from closing itself uh, as a race for the key. And then we'll make one example so we can see that the comparer is working. Hitting save, run. And now we're seeing a string equals returns false, and the second is true. That's fine. And now we're calling a private static uh, another comparison. For example, you know, comparison. And that is, that is the thing where, where things getting interesting. So it white. And now we are calling these things. And let's say these. We are making three to three. And we are firing our another comparison from the main. Now we're hitting run, which is true, then with the key. A string equals false, and it is false, of course. So what happened? We do need an initialization of new comparer, and we do initialize the comparer two times in our program code. So you can imagine if you're calling the comparer from another another classes, you get a lot of a lot of comparer instances. So with this propose, we have to create uh, we are hiding uh, the, the constructor and now we're making a private comparer get comparer instance method instance and for this purpose we have to create a member and this because we have to use a static static comparer which has the initialized value of null. That is important because we're now getting in our private and we have to make this also static. A comparer get compare instance. At first, we are comparing if the comparer is null. This is basically when the first time the get compare instance is, is called, we're saying return new comparer instance. 
and otherwise we are returning the comparer itself. Now we go back in our program, we see new comparer cannot be accessible because we are uh, we are set the constructor to not public, to prior, and now we can delete these lines and we're calling comparer and well of course I, I forgot this must be public of course because we want to call the get comparer instance method in our, our programs. So we're saying comparer, comparer and get comparer instance and we're calling it here too. So now we are getting we are setting a new instance in this case but in the second case we are getting the same instance. So at first let's jump to the get compare instance and hit a breakpoint so we can see if things are going fine for us. Now we're hitting start. We are going there. The first time the comparer is called the instance, the comparer is null and we're returning a new comparer instance. So we're getting in our program. We're seeing everything works fine, false true, which is correct. And now we're calling the uh, another comparison method. And now we're going there. The comparer. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, that was basically a huge mistake. I was a bit fast. We are not calling return new. At first, we were saying comparer equals new comparer and after that we're returning the comparer so we're reading again and we're going there the second time and now we have to see the comparer has already an instance and we return turning the comparer we're going there and if everything works fine we should see that um, without any debugging, the second comparison is also true. False, it's true. Let's have a check. It must be false. Everything is fine. So, if you make uh, the constructor not visible, you have to implement a get instance method, of course. And in this get instance method, you can control if or how many instances you want to make it possible. In this case, we are checking if there is already a comparison instance, we are returning this instance, otherwise we are creating new. So, this makes sense, because you are using not that much, that much space, yeah, if you call on the compare a lot of times. You can save space, you can save unnecessary instances. And that is basically the use of a single design pattern. I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you uh, learned something. If so, please hit like or subscribe to my channel and the support of you guys is very much appreciated. And uh, please let me know if you have any further wishes for videos. Uh, and I hope it's, it's fine. So thank you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.